JBN, we keep you informed. Missing baby, believed to be Naya Frank, found. A baby believed to be Naya Frank, the infant who was stolen from his mother at five weeks old, has been brought to the halfway tree police station. The police are conducting checks to confirm whether it is in fact the missing child and are currently meeting with the baby's mother. A woman is in custody and is being questioned. We currently have a baby in our custody and we believe it is the baby. The mother is sure it's her baby, confirmed Senior Superintendent of Police Stephanie Lindsay. She explained that DNA testing will have to confirm if the baby is actually Naya Frank. The case never went cold. We have always been working with the mother and the social media may have helped, Lindsay added. Reports are that the baby was found in the corporate area and was recovered after the police received a tip. Naya has been missing since October 13, 2019. According to the halfway tree police, his mother was walking with him along Russell Road in St. Andrew when a motor car drove up with three men aboard. One of the men reportedly alighted from the vehicle and forced Nayer and his mother into the motor car before taking the child from the mother and shoving her from the vehicle. Two brothers among three gunned down in Central Village amid curfew. Three people, including two brothers in their early 20s, were shot dead by gunmen in two separate incidents in Central Village, St. Catherine on Monday. This, while a curfew has been in place in a section of the overall community. The deceased have been identified as Chandy Knight, a 22-year-old Mason, and his brother Chanel Knight, 25, and Kevin Bruce Anglin, a 48-year-old carpenter of Windsor Heights, also located in the overall Central Village community. Reports are that about 5.30 p.m., the Knight brothers were in the Harmonic Heights section of the community when loud explosions were heard. Upon the arrival of the police and after a search, the bodies of the two men were found with gunshot wounds. They were later pronounced dead at hospital. And while the investigators were at that crime scene, they were alerted about another gun attack in the neighboring community of Windsor Heights. The police went to the area and found Anglin's body with several gunshot wounds. The police at 6 p.m. on Saturday, January 18, imposed a curfew in sections of Central Village. That curfew ran until 6 p.m. on Monday, January 20. The curfew has since been extended until today, Wednesday. Mother blames doctor for daughter's death. As St. Elizabeth Woman is blaming the death of her daughter, a 13-year-old student at William Nib High School in Trelawney, on a medical doctor at the Falmouth Hospital, who, she claimed, misdiagnosed her daughter and then gave her medication for an ailment she did not have. The mother, Janet Powell, who is of a cheap side address in St. Elizabeth, said that on Thursday her daughter Tiffany, who was a boarder, began experiencing excruciating pain and was taken to the Falmouth Hospital where she was examined by a doctor who determined that she was suffering from a sinus allergy. He gave her an injection and prescribed some medication for her. And Friday when her condition worsened, including the fact that she could not my mouth. I took her back to the doctor. He accused Tiffany of being stubborn and refusing to open her mouth, said the distraught mother. Unhappy with what had unfolded at the hospital, the worried mother took her daughter to the Mandeville Hospital late on Friday. Emergency blood work was done, and the results, said Powell, showed that Tiffany was suffering from meningitis. She died the following day about 3 p.m. If a doctor in a Falmouth, I diagnosed my daughter's illness properly and provided her with the right treatment. I don't believe she should have died, said the grieving mother. When Prudence Wedderburn, chief executive officer of the Falmouth Hospital, was contacted for a comment, a woman who identified herself as the CEO's secretary refused to put the call through to Wedderburn and to flat refused to divulge her name. She also declined to accept any questions. When the news of Tiffany's death reached the staff and the students at William Nib, there was an outpouring of grief, especially among her classmates, two of whom fainted while tears streamed on the faces of others. Several students broke down and started bawling. Two girls fainted and were treated by officers from the emergency medical services at the Falmouth Fire Service, acting principal Audrey Steele said. Tiffany was a fixture at the school. She danced, sang, modeled, and was an enthusiastic member of the school's drama club, added Steele. Police want help identifying dead man. The police are seeking the public's help in properly identifying a man 
who was shot and killed on Worthington Terrace, Kingston 5, on the weekend. The body is of dark complexion, medium build, has a low cut hair, is about 170 centimeters or 5 feet 7 inches long, and appears to be that of a man who was in his late 50s. He was clad in a white t shirt, blue and white shorts, and a pair of gray sneakers. According to the police, people in the area said the dead man went by the names Gilly Priest, Gilly, and Leroy Gilzine. Lawmen said that about 7.45 p.m. on Saturday, January 11, the deceased was riding his bicycle along Worthington Terrace when he was spawned upon by armed men who opened gunfire hitting him. He was taken to the hospital by the police where he was pronounced dead. Anyone with information can contact the Halfway Tree Criminal Investigations Branch at 876 926-2551. Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Unidentified man dies after incident with JUTC bus and a tractor trailer. An unidentified man has succumbed to injuries following an incident involving an international trailer head which made contact with a Jamaica urban transit company JUTC bus along the Green Acres Main Road in the vicinity of Medores St. Catherine. On Sunday, January 19, the JUTC is reporting. According to the report, a JUTC chartered bus was traveling along the Green Acres Main Road about 4.30 p.m., heading in the direction of Spanish Town. On reaching a section along the roadway, a tractor trailer head was traveling in the opposite direction. The JUTC bus driver said that when he observed the tractor trailer approaching the bus, he veered further left, mounted the embankment, and stopped. He said the tractor trailer made contact with the bus while passing, and upon examining the damage to the bus, he saw a man lying on the roadway suffering from injuries. The driver reported that he called the police, and the injured man was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The police are investigating. Security Minister condemns anti-Semitic graffiti in Mobe. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang has condemned the recent actions of people placing graffiti with anti-Jew, anti-Semitic sentiments in and around the city of Montego Bay. The action, the minister said, exemplifies the fact that a few persons in the country continue to betray the accepted morals and values of society. Jamaica is known for its inclusiveness and seeks to welcome cultural diversity, as outlined in Bob Marley's song, One Love, and exemplified by our motto, Out of Many One People. I reject strongly this type of behavior and have asked the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch to investigate and identify the perpetrators and analyze for any real risk, Chang said. The minister said he is calling on all Jamaicans to embrace inclusiveness and to join in condemning acts of anti-Semitism and to live good, as it is important that as a nation there is a reclaiming of values and norms that ensure the safety of our citizens and visitors. Chang said he is reassuring the public that there are continued efforts from the ministry, both at the policy and operational side, in providing for the tenants of public order, security, and safety. Barry G. leaves Mellow FM. Veteran broadcaster Barrington Barry G. Gordon has ended his association with Montego Bay-based radio station Mellow FM, fueling speculation that he may land a job at an overseas station that caters to the Jamaican diaspora. According to a release, the celebrated radio distract is following his dream of traveling to bring his brand of entertainment to the Jamaican diaspora and to extend his knowledge to the youth by training young broadcasters and DJs. It has been my biggest inspiration, my dream, to impact the Jamaican population of 2.9 million and its diaspora. I have had many offers to be in many places, which I have never been driven to explore. Now I am looking forward to creating an entity to go where I can impact my Jamaican people and continue to spread the Jamaican culture around the globe, the release said. Barry G's last official broadcast on Mellow FM was last week, Tuesday. Al Robinson, Chief Executive Officer of Mellow FM, confirmed Barry G's resignation. We are going to miss Barry G. Is the greatest broadcaster in the history of Jamaica radio. He and Mellow FM altered the media landscape during our time together, and no one could do an outside broadcast that Barry G. Robinson said. 
We're going to miss him and we're going to have a big send off for him at the station soon. Barry G worked with Mellow FM for 11 years and was instrumental in the growth of the station into a media powerhouse. In 1975, he graduated from Kingston College before landing his first job on radio at the now defunct Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC. He stayed there until 1987 before joining RGR in a major marketing coup. JBC lured Gordon back in 1989 and he stayed until 2001. He has since worked at Power 106 FM, Hot 102, Class FM, and Mellow FM in Montego Bay. For his services to broadcasting, Barry G was awarded the Order of Distinction in the rank of officer in 2010. Last year, he was presented with a United States Congressional Proclamation from Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark of the 9th Congressional District in New York for his work in broadcasting and entertainment. With more than 44 years of experience on radio and being involved in the entertainment industry, Gordon has shown no signs of slowing down anytime soon despite suffering three strokes. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.